Monsta and Leela are organizing a joint event? That's pretty cool! Wonder what occasions brought them together! Let's ask around and see if we can find out! Now, we just need a major transport hub where lots of travelers trade info. Preferably one that's high up with a great line of sight. Um... Oh! Got it! Wang Shuin! Come on, let's go! Traveler and a Paimon? We were just talking about you. This is more serendipitous than finding Mora after face planting on the road. <laughs> it's been too long. I'll bet you have some thrilling new tales from your journey to fill me in on. I can see it in your eyes. Excellent! <laughs> I knew I could count on you. What were you talking about before we got here? Something fun? Or oh, something delicious? We were talking about one certain traveler and how two's company, but three's a crowd, as the inseparable duo tore around to that, making four friends here and five more there, often at sixes and sevens as they brave the lakes and seas, collecting pieces of eight and countless other treasures. <laughs> they clearly must have nine lives. Wink, wink. Let's hope they have less than ten deaths. What the? It just gets worse and worse. Shortly, you may attend a grand banquet at Stonegate. All will be dressed to the nines for majestic food and fine wines. And after eight long drinks and seven shorts, they'll each write six lines five times. You've been to all four corners of the world, so in three short seconds, can you guess from these two stanzas of one speech each what this event is about? <laughs> it's not, though that does sound fun. Huh, maybe we missed an opportunity. In fact, it's a poetry gala! Jointly hosted by representatives from both Mondstadt and Leela. Do you still remember the promise I made to the distinguished director who here during the Lantern Rite? Oh, something about writing poetry together? That's right! At the dinner table that night, I just knew this young bard was a rare talent with exceptional taste. You know, it's rare to encounter such a kindred spirit. And now, I finally seized the chance to collaborate. It took me much trekking across the land to petition Eugene Terrace and contact the Knights of Favonius, but eventually... In the spirit of friendship and poetry sharing, I managed to successfully organize the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala. Bit of a weird name. Leila's poetry is known far and wide, and Mondstadt is the city of wine and song. With two nations teaming up, it'll be double the fun, and a great chance for people from both places to get to know one another. Hutao and I will be the co-hosts for this poetry gala. Of course, I haven't studied the various forms and formalities of Liyue poetry for very long, so please forgive my dreadful performance just now. Not at all, Venti. You followed my lead most excellently. <laughs> you flatter me. Well, this sounds like fun. Let's get involved! Oh, Paimon, sure you'll be amazing! Remember that time in Liyue when Paimon gave you the first half of a couplet? Wind rises, winds never churn. You came up with the second half right away! Oh, looks like someone's got a knack for this. Perhaps we'll have to raise the difficulty a little. Alright, so basically you guys are here to discuss the activities for the poetry gala, right? Mm -hmm. Looks like little Paimon's brain has gained a wrinkle or two. You guessed it so effortlessly, but... You still guessed it wrong. Huh? Wait, Paimon guessed wrong? We came here hoping to invite a special guest. I already told you, I'm not going. Xiao, you're here too! Never having penned a verse myself, 
How could I hope to judge the poetry of others? Besides, afflicted with karma as I am, the raucous atmosphere you are cultivating is precisely the kind which I must avoid, as you well know. Hey now, there's a first time for everything, right? We all start from itsy bitsy spider, but give it a shot and you'll be wandering lonely as a cloud in no time. And you don't even have to join us in person if you really don't want to. You can just watch the party from a nearby mountaintop and uh, cheer us on. But at least head down and take a look first. It's right by the inn, and there's plenty of fun activities to get involved with. It can't hurt to take a quick walk and check things out. Besides, with the renowned traveler here, what is there to fear? <sighs> I'll consider it. It's nearly time! Why don't you all head to the venue and take a look around? Quite a few of your friends should have arrived by now. Yes, that's right! Venti and I still need to discuss the poem for the opening ceremony. So, uh, we'll catch up with you later. Plus, our adeptus friend might need a bit more convincing. We'll see if we can coax him down. Gotcha! We'll be on our way then! about that for an opening? Yes, yes, I like it. But if we could give it a bit more oomph, it would be even better. I think we should lead with a bang, dip into a slippity slide, then whoosh into a whoop whoop boom! Got it? Got it. <laughs> Completely understood. Wow, it's so lively! Didn't think there'd be so many people here already! And a lot of them are familiar faces! Let's go say hi! Hmm? Well, look who's here! This poetry fest seems to have attracted talent of the highest caliber. Hey! Shincho and Chanyun are here too! I was actually heading into the mountains to train, but he accosted me on the way and dragged me here. Oh, how your words wound me. Is it not the responsibility of an exorcist of Liyue to ensure that this celebration of friendship between our two nations stays free of evil spirits? Besides, this is an excellent opportunity to meet heroes who have come from far and wide. Surely, you must be curious as to how that heroine of Mondstadt was able to lift such heavy objects like they were but a feather. Are you talking about Noelle? Yeah, she's super strong! Oh? Well, since you are so well acquainted, could we trouble you to introduce us later? Okay, fine. But don't forget to help me with my investigation like you promised. That's the only reason I agreed to come at all. Huh? What if <clears throat> Naturally, I could never forget such a thing. My word is my bond. Relax, dear Paimon. All will be revealed in time. Uh, okay. Are you sure that wasn't really an evil spirit? Open your mind to all possibilities, and I'm sure you will find the answer. I suppose that's true. Hey, wait a second. You're not planning on telling everyone here, are you? Diona! Traveler in Paimon? Uh, I didn't expect to see you here. Are you here to mix drinks? That's right. I was specially asked to attend this event on behalf of the cat's tail, and I'm also here as a mixologist representing the Mondstadt wine industry. You're... representing Mondstadt's wine industry? Oh, you must be hating every minute of it. Of course I hate it! 
but it's also a perfect chance to destroy the reputation of Mondstadt's wine business once and for all. Opportunities like this don't come around every day, you know. Huh? How do you figure that? <laughs> all I need to do is add some gross ingredients to the drinks, and I can create the most disgusting concoctions imaginable. <laughs> Nobody will ever buy wine from Mondstadt again. <laughs> uh, Paimon thinks you'll end up getting the opposite result. Humph! Just you wait! I ain't about to mess this up. Are you gonna write some poetry with us too? Poetry? Hmm. I've heard plenty of bards sing in the tavern before. But I've never tried writing any myself. You should join in! It'll be fun! Fine. If I have time. Now, should I try adding loach pearls or horse tails next? Oh, wait! Since we're in Liyue, mm, I should add some Jueyun chilies! Ha <laughs> ha! Mika! Noel! Oh, it's the Traveler in Paimon. Are you here for the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala as well? <laughs> you said that with a straight face? Is Paimon the only one who thinks it sounds weird? Re-representatives? Uh, no. Nothing fancy like that. We were sent here by the Knights of Favonius to help maintain order and set up the venue. But... I didn't really do anything useful so far. Noelle brought all these tables and chairs here from Mondstadt by herself. She's a true knight. Oh, now, that's just not true. Your efforts were indispensable. You selected the venue, drew up the layout, and so on. Also, you're the true knight here. I'm still in training. If anything, I should be addressing you as sir. What? No, 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 no. Please don't. Just keep calling me Mika. Uh, why does it feel like these two could keep this up all day? Anyway, Master Jean did say that as long as we keep on top of our work, we should take a look around while we're here and get involved in the poetry gala as much as we can. But I haven't written much poetry before, so I'm not sure if I'll fit in. I actually have the same concern. Yeah, plus, you won't be alone. We're joining too. The Traveler's a really good rider, you know. Really? In that case, we'll try our best too. Perhaps. The challenge of writing poetry is a rite of passage that all who wish to qualify as a knight must eventually face. Uh, Pano wouldn't go that far. But anyway, no backing out now! See you soon! Sure! Maybe you can teach me a thing or two. Oh, Mika beat me to it. I was gonna ask for help too. What do you think the key to a good poem is, Mika? Do you have any idea? Huh? I... uh... I'm not too sure either. If I'd known we'd be doing this sooner, I would have asked Miss Lisa to recommend some books on the topic. Poems and melodies wandering the wind, wafting to pastures beyond their home. Two greedy fishies struggling to swim. They ate so much that they're starting to groan. Animal crystal fly draped in gold robes, a bright little light from that glaze lantern glows. Benches pinch the rice and scoot while the boars of the forest anxiously root. Welcome one and all to this festival of poetry, jointly organized by Lua and Mondstadt. Or in full, the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala. We're your hosts, Liyue's verse monger of the darkest alleys, Hu Tao. 
and Mondstadt's liquor-loving lyricist, Venti the Bard. The purpose of this event is to promote friendly poetic exchanges between our two nations. So please, have fun, talk to other people, and make some new friends. If you're here, you're our guest, so please enjoy this poetry fest. I'd also like to reassure everyone that this event welcomes people of all skill levels, from first-time rhymers to seasoned songwriters. If you ask me, the most important thing you can bring to writing poetry is authenticity. That means reaching deep down to all the thoughts and feelings you usually hide away or struggle to express, and putting them into words. Just write from the heart in whatever form you like. To help everyone really cut loose and enjoy themselves to the fullest, Venti and I have carefully prepared a three themes to be revealed over the course of three days. Let's get right to it! The first theme is... Riddle Me This. Solving riddles, huh? Interesting. It's actually a pretty good choice for a warm-up activity. Whew. I'm glad they're not making us write sonnets or something right at the start. Does everyone see the lanterns hanging around the venue? These have been specially prepared for the riddle game. Simply write down your riddle and hang it on a lantern. Then Venti and I will select a few to pose to the crowd, and you will try to solve them. We'll now give you some time to write down and hang up your riddles. Feel free to walk around and talk with the other contestants to get the creative juices flowing. And remember, whoever guesses the most riddles correctly will get a prize. And with that, the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala has officially begun. We couldn't cajole Adeptus Chow in the end. He said he'd take a peek from the peaks, but that was all he'd agree to. It's a real shame. I had the perfect poem for his entrance and everything. <laughs> that was a good little opening ceremony, wasn't it? Even if I do say so myself. Rome. A visitor asks me why, for a dream beyond the sky. Okay, someone from Liyue definitely wrote this one. I just read that one too. Liyue's poems seem pretty difficult to grasp. Dreams? Sky? Is it talking about some kind of bird? Um, so it means something like, uh... This thing's really far from home, it's in a vast area, and it's flying really high! Is that it? Oh, you're amazing, Paimon! Oh, it looks like I still have a lot of learning to do. Oh, it's nothing, really. Once you've spent enough time in Liyue, you just sort of pick up on these things. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Back when I was out with the Grandmaster on the expedition, I started picking up some local customs without even realizing it. But back to the riddle. We still haven't actually solved it. What could it be talking about? Something that flies high and far. Hmm. Oh, that makes me think of dandelions. Oh, that makes sense. And Mondstatters believe that dandelions can carry your feelings on the wind. But maybe we're missing something? It can't be that easy. After all, it's a riddle from Liyue. What would their equivalent of the dandelion be? If there even is one. What do you think, Traveler? Great! Then we'll have one answer ready to go when the game begins. Right! Just like Venti said. As long as the interpretation makes sense and reflects our perception of the poem, then perhaps there are no wrong answers. Well, no matter what the real answer is, the guessing's all a part of the fun! Let's go look at the next one! Oh yes! I want to see if there's any Mondstadt-style riddles. Oh, 
This handwriting is just awful. Um, I have four corners like a square pancake. But I'm stuffed and seasoned and carefully baked. I pass through the lips one piece at a time. The more you consume, the broader your mind. Oh, well, Paimon's drooling from that one. Is there really a food that can make you smarter? Paimon's got to try that. <laughs> oh, Paimon, you have to look past the surface level meaning with riddles, or you'll fail to plumb their depths. Huh? So have you got any ideas, Shinjo? <laughs> well... Singcho just hung that riddle up a moment ago. Oh, so this is Shincho's riddle! You know, Paimon was expecting you to write something a little more... elegant. This festival is about building friendship and mutual understanding. With so many friends from Mondstadt present, I thought I'd try writing something more accessible and less flowery, so that more people could enjoy it. Hey, not bad! Uh, so, buddy, does that mean you can tell your old pal Paimon the answer on the sly, or...? Not a chance. You'll have to wait for the answer to be revealed, just like everyone else. Ha! <laughs> Mimi! If that's how you feel, why don't you try and stump me with a riddle of your own? Uh, maybe Paimon will! We'll see who stumps who! Traveler, you'll help Paimon come up with a riddle, right? Ha! At least you're nice to Paimon! <laughs> then I look forward to seeing the fruits of your literary labors. that the chairs get tired from working all the time, so they shouldn't use them to sharpen their claws. Oh, okay. So a riddle needs to have a bait and switch. Are you trying to write one? Yep, and thanks to you, Paimon's just thought of one. Maybe I should try to come up with one, too. Diona, do you want to know the answer? Nah, no need. I don't really care about winning a prize. Oh, okay then. Well, looks like it's time to carry on with the event. We should regroup with the others. Sure, have fun. Looks like everyone's about done mingling and riddling. <laughs> Gather round and look this way. Venti and I have selected several riddles from everyone's contributions, and we added a few of our own to the mix for good measure. Shortly, we'll randomly select a few to read aloud. If your riddle gets selected, remember that you have to announce the correct answer at the end. Anyone who guesses correctly gets one point, and if nobody guesses correctly, the writer of the riddle gets a point. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> of course, when the riddler reveals the right response, it only counts if everyone agrees that it's not too far-fetched. That's right. Now, if there are no more questions, it's time to reveal the first riddle. Hopefully, they'll draw at least some that I can get. Oh no, does only the first person to solve it get the points? Ugh. 
That means I have to be first to raise my hand. Please choose Paimon's riddle. Please choose Paimon's riddle. Riddle number one. Let me see here. Ugh. This riddle is, uh, unique, um, especially the handwriting. I have four? Cor four! Four corners, like a square pancake, but I'm stuff stuffed and seasoned and carefully baked. Baked? Baked. I pass through the chips, lips, uh, one piece at a time, the more you uh, consume, 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 the broader your mind. <gasps> they drew Shinchos! Better answer as quickly as you can. You don't want someone else beating you to it. You oh, rat! Um, it's, uh, pizza! The answer even without the author coming forward, I can confidently declare this answer wrong. I mean, how does eating pizza broaden your mind? And while I'm no expert in exotic dishes, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> pizza is round, is it not? Like mora meat? But eating pizza makes you happy, and being happy makes it easier to face problems that need solving, so... Okay, Paimon admits she may have jumped the gun on this one. Maybe it's some other kind of food. Oh, no, 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 no. Riddles are never that simple, and it needs to be something that makes people more intelligent. If Paimon had known it was going to be this tough, she'd have read more books in her time. Uh, what is it? Have you got it? Huh? Oh, gotcha! Bugs! The answer is bugs! <laughs> that was quicker than I expected. I was quite proud of that one. Oh? It appears the riddle writer has announced the answer. Okay, one point to Paimon. Huh? So the answer was books? Oh, how did I not get that? Come on, Mika, concentrate. <laughs> We're awesome at this! Oh, uh, what Paimon meant to say was that you're awesome at this. Thanks for the point, Traveler. On to riddle number two. I gotta get in there first this time. High above the wispy clouds, amidst the gloomy snow-filled shroud, standing alone on an icy stage, beneath it every lowly sage. <laughs> Looks like a poem from Leela. Oh, it's... I got it! Uh... uh, uh. <laughs> Looks like those two have some ideas. Hmm, could it be some kind of plant that lives in cold, high places? Mika, please go ahead. As a full knight of Avonius, you represent all of us from Mondstadt here. Uh, no. No, how could I? It was you who thought of it first. You should be the one to guess. Well, my answer isn't necessarily correct. Besides, it's first come, first served, and you beat me to it. N no, I didn't. You were just before me. Uh, how gracious and considerate our fellow competitors are towards each other. A wonderful sight to see. How about both of you say your answer at the same time? If you're both right, you'll each get a point. Oops, I didn't realize we'd made such a scene. Oh, crud. I guess we dragged that out a bit. Um... So, Noelle, uh, what do you say? Yes, let's. Our answer is... Cecilia! Oh, that certainly sounds like a good candidate for the correct answer. A flower that blooms on the highest peaks and known for its exquisite beauty. The Cecilia is held by many Mondstatters to be the true Windblue. Uh, a 
Although, since the writer hasn't yet come forward to announce the answer, this probably wasn't the answer they were looking for. <laughs> Sorry. Any other answers? Oh, I can't believe I was wrong. Maybe it's a plant from Li Yue. Is the answer Qingxin? The poem does evoke a strong sense of quiet, proud solitude in a high place. Correct! I wrote this one. Qingxin is the right answer. No! Xinjo got it before Paimon could! However, after listening to the host's description, I do remember reading about Cecilia flowers in a book once. They definitely fit the description of a pure flower standing proudly and alone on high. So, I'd like to approve the answer from our two friends from Mondstadt as well. Really? Oh, well, thank you so much! <laughs> well, since even the Riddler themselves agrees, all three contestants earn a point each! Darn it! Shinjo's caught up to Paimon already! Yeah, you're probably right. Moving now to our third riddle. Huh? Why is the handwriting so... floaty? What's got no wings but flies in the air, never gets tired of floating up there. So full of mora it comes out the nose, but in the sea, glug, 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 down it goes. That's Paimon's. They picked Paimon's riddle. Yay! <laughs> What is it? Why isn't anyone guessing? Is Paimon's riddle too hard? That's not quite it. More like... It's so ludicrously simple that we just cannot believe it. What? No way! Well, go on then! Tell us the answer if you're so sure! The answer is Paimon. Uh, what? It's Paimon. I was actually going to say Paimon, too. Me, too. Uh, no! You're all completely wrong! <laughs> How the heck did you all think the answer was Paimon? Paimon, do you have wings behind your back? Uh, no. You're always floating, but you never seem to get tired of it. And Paimon has a very healthy appetite, which must cost the Traveler a lot of mora and meal expenses. I've heard from the Senior Knights that the Traveler rescued Paimon by fishing her out of the sea. So, that means Paimon can't swim. So if she fell in the sea, then... Uh... Glug, glug, glug. Wait, wait! Now Paimon's doubting herself! What was the answer again? No! You're all wrong! The answer to Paimon's fail is obviously the Jade Chamber! You know, the Jade Chamber that's always flying up there in the sky? Is that so? Hmm... I still maintain that the riddle actually describes Paimon more accurately. In fact, if we just added two more lines to the poem, it would be the perfect riddle. The Traveler's Companion and Talkative Guide. A praiseworthy presence always by their side. Aww, do you mean it? Can we really add that part? <gasps> you think so cute? <laughs> okay, then Paimon would like to announce that the correct answer to the riddle is... The Widely Adored Paimon! Great! And with that... The widely adored Paimon has gifted a point each to everyone who answered just now. <laughs> Guessing riddles is a lot of fun. And even though Paimon didn't manage to beat Xingqiu, Paimon still feels like she got a little smarter. Oh, uh, didn't Changyu mention he was investigating something before? Let's go ask him about it. Oh? Hi, Paimon. You know, for a moment there, 
I was worried I might lose to you. Oh, are you collecting your prize right now? I am indeed. Though, if you really want it, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. Seriously? Wow, what is it? Um... A most generous donation by yours truly, as director of the Wong Sheng Funeral Parlor. Namely, a buy one, get one free coupon for our high-end customized service package. It's a pleasant surprise to learn. You're so interested in it, Paimon. <laughs> nope, nah, -uh. no thank you, hard pass, you can keep it. Are you sure? In that case, I'll gladly take it. Here you are. Now remember, this package comes with our anytime, anywhere, on-demand collection service. Just give us a call and we'll be right there. Uh, with any luck, <laughs> we'll still show up even if you're <clears throat> unable to call. So, to what do we owe the honor, Paimon? <laughs> what do you mean, we? Chanyun's the one Paimon's looking for, not you. Wasn't he saying something about needing help? Oh, yeah. That. How about I put it in riddle form? Huh? Isn't the competition over? Twas like a demon not demonic, or devil devoid of the diabolic. Afar it floated free above the ground, but when approached, though sought, naught could be found. Um... Sounds to me like you encountered a ghastly little ghosty in the wild. Perhaps I should just explain it. Basically, while I was training this morning, I suddenly caught sight of a non-human entity. It was floating in the air without any kind of external aid, and its body was almost transparent. At first I thought I'd finally encountered a demon that wasn't propelled by my pure yang spirit, and immediately prepared to exorcise it. But none of my methods had any effect on it, and when I went to try and get a closer look at it, and try to ascertain what I was dealing with, it disappeared into thin air. Hmm, you're sure it's not a ghost or spirit of some kind? Quite sure. I could sense that it had a physical body, and if it were a spirit, I'm sure it would have been scared away long before I saw it. It's all my fault. I got overexcited, and in my haste, I didn't ascertain its true nature before taking action. Thinking back on it, if it wasn't an evil spirit, maybe I offended some kind of adeptus or illuminated beast. You shouldn't blame yourself. It was something you'd never seen before. Anyone else would have reacted the same way. Besides, we're making up for it now by doing our best to find out the truth. Any thoughts, Venti? Have you managed to untangle Chong Yun's twisted tail? Hmm, why don't you take a guess first, Tu Tao? Oh, that means you have. <laughs> I can't be absolutely certain, but I'm reasonably sure it's not what Li Wei would call an evil spirit or demon. So whatever it is, it's not dangerous. Hmm, how about this? We can incorporate a search element into tomorrow's poetry activity. Oh, does that mean we get to play outside while we write poetry? <laughs> Close, but no. Good ideas could just pop into your head out of thin air, but if you ask me, everyone should relax tonight and get a good rest before tomorrow. You say that, but your gaze keeps drifting over towards the wine stand. <laughs> Looks like it's about time to head over to the venue again. Paimon's still curious what Chung Yun saw the other day. Wow, everyone got here so early. The sun is shining bright today. <laughs> as soon as that leaf floats past Stonegate, we shall reveal today's poetry theme. The theme of the second day of the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala is... Pairing Couplets! Pairing couplets. Oh, I've heard of that. It's a Leo A art form where you have to create new lines of poetry based on fixed rules. Kind of like a fill-in-the-blanks game, but for poetry. 
heaven and earth, rain and wind, the endless sky and the boundless land, forest boars and ocean shrimp, lavender melons and matsutake shrooms. Based on a given line of poetry, you must create the second line to form a pair or couplet. As long as you take inspiration from the wide world around you, you'll find it's not so difficult after all. The two lines should be neatly matched, complementing each other both semantically and rhythmically. In essence, it's just like most other forms of poetry. To bully your imaginations and allow the winds of inspiration to fill your sails, we've added an additional component, an inspiration walk. An inspiration walk? By inspiration walk, we simply mean wandering around in the wild, taking in the scenery and pocketing any poetic thoughts. Of course, to all our friends, old and new, please be careful while out and about. Wong Sheng Funeral Parlor is already fully booked for the month ahead, and if there's any more demand, I'll be the only one with a smile on my face. In short, Please roam freely as the mood takes you. Enjoy the spectacular scenery of our two beautiful nations and fill your imaginations with the most pleasing of poetry. We will all reconvene here tonight. Traveler, can you round up Singcho, Chongyun, and the Mondstadt contingent? I have a favor to ask of you. Oh, is it that thing from yesterday? <laughs> Thanks. I'm counting on you. So, we hope that each of you can keep an eye out for this while you're out on your inspiration walk. Are you sure this is okay? It was just something I ran into, and now we're imposing my business on everyone else. Oh, please don't say that, Mr. Chong Yun. Master Jean ordered us to work with you however we can to improve cooperation. Helping each other out is exactly what we're here for. Besides, investigating any strange occurrences near Mondstadt and making a report to the Knights of Avonius is also part of our job. I don't mind either, because while we're out, I can look for new cocktail ingredients, too. <laughs> Just think of it like an outing with friends. It'll be fun! The way I see it, you should just humbly accept their willingness to help. All right. In that case, thank you all very much. I will be sure to repay your kindness someday. Now, how about we split into two groups for the day? Uh, you mean to cover more ground? Not just that. Don't forget, this is still part of the poetry gala. If we all see the same sights and sounds during our inspiration walk, how can we write unique poems? That's true. But how do we decide who goes in which group? Why don't we draw lots? Yeah! <laughs> That'll make things even more fun! Drawing lots? But what if I end up with the Li Yue crowd, and I can't think of anything to say to them? I've got the slips of paper here. Who wants to go first? Oh, Paimon! Paimon wants to go first! Okay, so that's the Traveler, Paimon, Diona, and Chongyun in one group, and Singcho, Mika, and Noel in the other. What a relief. Uh, at least I'll have Noel with me. Then I humbly place myself at your instruction. Oh, uh, I don't think... Uh, th that won't be... I also await your guidance. Take care, everyone. See you all tonight. Did anyone forget to bring anything? If not, then let's get going! Dun, 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 dun. Come on! Wow. Are those ears and tail real? So fluffy. All right. Miss Diona, is there some place in particular you would like to go? Just call me Diona. Since we're trying to find that thing you saw, why don't we start with the place you saw it last time? Sure. Then, everyone, follow me.
Enjoy your inspiration walks. I'm looking forward to some splendid poetry tonight. Right over there, next to the water. That's where I saw it. But it was a little foggy at the time, so I didn't get a clear look. Uh, the view from here is great, but there's kind of a gloomy atmosphere around here. Is this the kind of place you like to take a walk? I wasn't taking a walk. I come here to train. Train? Like how knights train for combat? Um, it's a bit different. As an exorcist of Liyue, my training involves practicing techniques for the exorcism of evil spirits. Exorcism? I've always wanted to demonstrate the power of exorcism, but it's a pity. I've never actually gotten the chance. Chang Yun is one in a million! He has pure Yang spirit, so as soon as he gets close, evil spirits run and hide! Huh? Isn't that a good thing? It's awful. Have you ever heard of an exorcist that's never seen an evil spirit? A lot of people think I'm a fraud because of this condition of mine. Your physical constitution is far rarer than the technique still passed down by exorcists today. You should treasure it. Conqueror of Demons. Is that a friend of yours? Yep, this is Xiao, an Adeptus of Liyue! An Adeptus? Wow, I've never seen one of those before. Uh, hello, Mr. Adeptus. Just call me Xiao. So, are you here to train too? Are you out for an inspiration walk? When I heard about the exorcist's encounter, my suspicions were roused. That's why I'm here. I've already informed the owner of the inn. If you see anything out of the ordinary, return immediately and leave it to me. I... Uh, oh... I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to drag even the Conqueror of Demons into this. I have already patrolled the area and found nothing amiss. Either the anomaly you encountered was no evil spirit, or perhaps it already left. I guess that means we came all this way for nothing. If there's no other business, I'll be taking my leave now. Mm. Yeah, you should come! There's no one else around here anyway, so you don't need to worry! But... I would also be honored if you joined us, Adeptus Xiao. It is a rare opportunity, and I have many questions about exercising evil spirits that I would like to ask you. Hmm... <sighs> Fine. Seems like this Adeptus is pretty shy. Or maybe all the Adepti in Liyue are like this. Team Chang Yun has a new member! Yay! Wh what? When did this become my team? Now that Adeptus Xiao is joining us, if anyone's team leader, it should be. Don't overthink it! Uh, Diona, didn't you say you wanted to find some new ingredients? Yeah, I don't get to come to Liyue very often, so I want to gather some new ingredients while I'm here. I've heard that Liyue's Jueyun chilies can set your throat on fire. Is that true? <laughs> I'm gonna mix them into my drinks and give it a try! Uh-huh. Jueyun chilies? Um, I'm not sure that would taste very good. Really? Let's go pick a whole bunch of them. What the... As well as Dweyun chilies, I also need some slime condensate or loach pearls. Are those really fit for human consumption? This is starting to sound like something Shangling would make. One with my blade! Spirit yeah. Four. Yeah. Okay, this should be enough. Diona, you seem really committed to, uh, 
making alcoholic drinks available to people of all tastes. What? No, never! I hate alcohol! When grown-ups drink too much, they get that stupid drunk look on their faces, can't speak clearly, and don't even respond properly. Sometimes, they just sleep on the floor all night. Alcohol is the root of all kinds of evil. So, I'm on a mission to mix the most disgusting drink in the whole world and show everyone just how awful alcohol really is. Nothing can stand in my way. If it means coming out to Liyue every day to pick fresh Dreyun chilies, then so be it. Hmm. Um, is it really worth all that effort? Uh, yeah. Because all my previous efforts have failed. Those stinking booze hounds not only haven't woken up to the truth of how bad alcohol is, they even keep praising my drinks. It makes me furious! But, uh, how is that possible? If this is the kind of stuff you're throwing into their drinks, it must taste absolutely vile, surely. <sighs> Are you calling me a liar? Well, if you don't believe me, I'll fix you a drink right now. Then you'll see. Uh, uh, no, no need. I... Uh... Huh, just you wait. Oh, no. Is she really going to add those Juyun chilies? If her claims are true, perhaps she too possesses a unique constitution of some kind. I don't see how it could have anything to do with her. Unless... She's under the influence of some kind of power? Maybe an evil spirit? No. I sense no trace of the demonic in her. Although there are traces of something else. Something rather special. In Liyue, we might say this child has adeptal affinity. It's ready! Here, I made one for Xiao too. Ugh... <sighs> Oh, boy. Look at that color. Yep, she definitely added Juyun chilies. What's wrong? You're not allergic to anything, are you? Don't worry, there isn't even any alcohol in it. It's a slime condensate base with a seasoning of Juyun chilies and finished with frog legs. Surely there's no way this can possibly taste good. Oh. Uh... Xiao downed it in a single gulp! Oh, great. Uh, if the Conqueror of Demons drank it, uh, it'd be rude of me to refuse. Oh. Changyun drank his too! Uh... Is he gonna be okay? This drink is... Delicious! It does have a touch of Ju Yun chili, but it isn't at all overpowering. It's completely different from Shangling's cooking or those drinks Sing Cho makes to mess with me. It's crisp and refreshing with just a hint of numbness, and the Ju Yun chili flavor combines with the smooth but not slimy texture of the frog legs to form a heavenly mixture. And oh, the slimes! Can we talk about the slimes? Before this, I never knew that they had such a pure and herby taste, like fresh grass after the rain! The power and purity of nature distilled into a cup! Amazing! Simply unbelievable! That's right! Slimes are absolutely sublime! Oh, I failed again! <sighs> but wait, what's gotten into Chong Yun? He's been so quiet up until now. I'm great, and I gotta try another. Diona, if you please, one more. I... Uh, oh, oh. Okay. I think I've calmed down a bit. Hmm, I'm sorry. Hmm, I can't believe I let you all see me like that. It's fine. My fault for not checking your spice tolerance first. Oh, looks like this Puryang spirit isn't such a great thing to have after all. Actually, before I drank it, I very much doubted what you said about your drinks. 
Uh. Huh, who'd have thought it? Diona and Changyun are actually kind of similar. Hmm? Xiao, what's wrong? Look over there. You mean the leaf? Something's written on it. What? You can see that from over here? Oh yeah, or it'll get swept away! There's a poem written on it. The Conqueror of Demons has truly amazing vision. Although, the following lines suggest that they didn't end up together. Why write a poem on a fallen leaf? The flowing waters are ruthless. They carry the leaves away with the current. This poem would likely have vanished into the void had we not found it. It makes no sense to me. That's true. I've heard Singcho say something similar before. When there's things that you're unable to say, or just never had the chance to say before it was too late, if it can be put on paper, it can be expressed as poetry. Is it kind of like wishing at a fountain? I used to do that sometimes when I was little! So... that means that our mystery poet was probably hoping that someone would read it, right? You think? Then... should we write a poem in reply? But we don't know who wrote it. How can we reply? Why not go upstream? Upstream? Why? The ink looks fresh. It can't have been written too long ago. This withered leaf floated down with the current. If we travel further upstream and drop a leaf into the same waters, it should be carried down past the original writer. Communicating with a mystery person using poems on fallen leaves! But how do we make sure that they'll receive it? We can write extra copies and drop the leaves in different places. As they say, where there's a will, there's a way. Surely at least one of our leaves will find a path. Either way, it's our only option. Then let's make like a tree and head upstream! Upstream, upstream, up we go! Oh, did you think of what to write yet? Ooh, great! Now give it here, and Paimon will toss it into the water! Hmm. <laughs> Things you never had the chance to say before it was too late. When silence is the final word, we mourn the loss of things unheard. I have little talent for, nor knowledge of poetry. The least in the water! Look, it's like a little boat! Merrily, merrily down the stream, life is but a dream. We should probably pick up the pace. We still have a few more leaves to set afloat, and we need to get back before it gets dark. Okay, let's go! Uh-huh. What's this? You two having a private chat? No, it's nothing. I just hope this isn't all in vain. The scenery here is quite beautiful. Let's pause here to seek some inspiration. Should we set up camp? Oh, please wait a moment. I'll pitch the tent. It's an inspiration walk. There's no need for all that. Okay. 
Well, I'll conduct reconnaissance nearby to ensure this area is safe and see if I can't scavenge any firewood or food while I'm at it. Wait, reconnaissance? It means survey the environment and plan our route forward. It's the foundation of all operations while out in the wild. Are all inspiration walks in Mondstadt this complicated? They're acting like this is completely normal. Am I the weirdo here? In that case, I'll conduct reconnaissance with Mika. Huh? Oh, okay then. Crumbs, now I have to try and make small talk. Should I mention the scenery? Uh, the weather? Very well, then leave the camp to me. So, Sing Cho, uh, do, do you, um, go on inspiration walks often, or, or, uh... I do. I always get bored when I'm cooped up at home, so I head out for a stroll. Life gets busy. You have to steal a moment of leisure when you can. Cool. Uh, oh, over there, firewood! You two, I'll have the tent set up soon. With this wood and the food I brought along, we can definitely put together a decent lunch. You've got quite a knack at wilderness survival. I'll give you that. Thanks. I... I was on an expedition with the Grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius for a while, not too long ago. I was in charge of surveying and mapping. Oh? You sound like a character from an adventure novel. Charging across the world, sword in hand. What? Uh, no, I'm nowhere near as amazing as all that. If I really run into a powerful enemy, I always leave it for someone stronger to deal with. You're too modest, Mika. A hero is measured not by the blood on his sword, but by what's in his heart. As long as a righteous heart that yearns to aid others beats within your chest, no matter where you go or what you have achieved, you may be called a hero. That all sounded pretty profound. Oh, I've never even thought about any of that before. Hello? Are you okay? Maybe we should return, lest Noel be forced to wait on us. Oh, uh, sure. smoothly? Do you need a cloth to wipe the sweat from your brow? No need, thanks. All clear. There's no danger in the vicinity. Noelle, your cooking is amazing. Every single dish is so tasty. Truly astounding. I never imagined it was possible to enjoy such a satisfying meal in the great outdoors. Really? Then what do you usually eat when you're out on an inspiration walk? Oh, well, since I usually sneak out from home, I just grab some dried snacks to take with me. Add in whatever fruit I pick along the way, and that's my lunch. By sneaking out, you mean running away from home? That's right. Or sometimes, I'll tell a cover story like, I'm going out to take care of business. But if you get caught, won't you get disciplined? So, just don't get caught. Huh. Hmm. Anyway, did anything interesting come up while you were out scouting? Well, Xing Cho and I talked about what it means to be a hero. 
now that I think about it, by Xing Cho's definition, you should be considered a hero too, Noel. Huh? Me? You're always happy to help everyone in the Knights of Favonius. Not only that, but whenever we're out training, you help out the citizens of Mondstadt. Oh, remember that time when a giant boulder was blocking the road? You cut it in two with a single blow. Oh? Sounds like she has both a heroic spirit and incredible martial prowess. Don't! Oh, please don't praise me like that. We should talk about what we came here to do. Finding inspiration. Miss Hu Tao said something about pocketing our... poetic thoughts. Mm. But so far, all we've done is gather some firewood and cook lunch. Mm. I have no idea what to write. You can write about anything. Looking at Cor Lapis, one can't help but wonder if one's own heart is as bright and clear as Jade. Observing Silk, so bright and beautiful, one pauses to consider whether it ever feels the sadness and sorrow that humans do. So we have to connect our internal world with the external one? Exactly. But that's just one of many possible methods. Perhaps you might gaze out at the bridge in the distance, and see a woman leaning on the railing, looking as if her heart is laden by sorrows that even the rushing waters below cannot wash away. Huh? Wait! I saw her at the gala yesterday! She wrote one of the riddles we answered! Why don't we go say hi? Hello, ma'am. How fortuitous it is that we meet again. Uh, hello! Are you here on your inspiration walk, too? Yes. Allow me to introduce ourselves. I am Xingqiu, and this is Noelle and Mika. Thank you for accepting our answer to your riddle yesterday. Oh, don't mention it. It's all in good fun. I'm Kelly Roe. So, Miss Kelly Roe... Are you from Fontaine? That's right. I was traveling in the area and just happened to see there was a poetry event being held at Stone Gate. It looked fun, so I thought I'd drop in. Your riddle yesterday made quite an impression on me. It was uniquely evocative. Have you studied Liyue poetry before? I haven't, actually. I've just picked up a few things here and there from chatting with people throughout my travels. Amazing! So you're a natural poet! We noticed you standing on the bridge from quite some distance away. Are you drawing poetic inspiration from the flowing current beneath your feet? <laughs> I haven't finished my poem yet. The water here was just so peaceful and calming. I stopped for a moment and lost myself in admiring it. Well, since we're all here, why not head back with us to the venue for tonight's festivities? It's getting late, after all. Huh? Are... are you sure? We can walk and talk. Perhaps the mingling of ideas will give rise to new inspiration. I'd personally like to hear Miss Callie Rowie's couplet. I'm sure I can learn something. <laughs> well, if you're all in agreement, I've got no reason not to join you. The first team is back, right on schedule! Huh? The others have yet to return? <laughs> Come on! Let's hurry! <sighs> we... Oh, oh, we're not too late, are we? Just how far did you all go? <laughs> Everyone catch your breath. Come on, deep breaths. One... Two. Now, don't panic. The party hasn't started yet. <sighs> we made it! Oh, Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> Paimon gets tired if she has to fly too fast! <sighs> oh, not to 
mention dropping all those leaves, Paimon's hands are cramping up. Huh. Sounds like someone needs to exercise more. Huh? You guys picked up a new teammate while you were out? Indeed. This is Kelly Roe. I believe you'll remember her from yesterday, though you weren't introduced. Hi, everyone. Hello, but you're not the only ones who's called in reinforcements. <laughs> Look who we got! Wait. Chow? Where'd he go? Chow, come on out! <sighs> Now that we've all regrouped, let's... Huh. Scratch that. Looks like we're still waiting on my co-host. <laughs> they say roosters crow at first light, and finches go to bed at night. But Director Who Tal's always on the ball. Anytime, anywhere, she'll answer your call. Um, are the theatrics really necessary? We're already on day two of the festival. The opening ceremony is over. <laughs> but my dear, dear Paimon, it seems you are not yet aware. That was not for my own sake, but for a special guest who's joining us today. <laughs> Director whose manner is as exuberant as ever. It always makes quite an impression. <laughs> oh boy! Now this is a surprise. Mr. Zhongli, I hope you are well. Xingqiu, what can you tell me about Mr. Zhongli? He seems like somebody very important. Yes, he's held in very high regard in Liyue Harbor. He's extremely erudite in many different domains of knowledge. Allow me to introduce you all to Zhongli, a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. His expertise is limitless, stretching from the celestial orbs to the terrestrial ores, spanning modern and ancient culture, delving into literature both prosaic and poetic. He may be my subordinate, but he is certainly a qualified poetry expert, and so we have invited him here tonight to judge the compositions. The director exaggerates. I am but vaguely acquainted with a few lines of classical poetry. Should you consider me to be remiss in my appraisal of your own compositions, please correct me. Ah, yeah, enough with the modesty already. If I didn't know better, I'd say you seemed nervous. Just focus on judging. Please rest assured that I shall rise to the occasion, Director. Let me do a quick count. One, two, three, four. Great! Equal numbers on both sides. Huh? Are you counting me too? Okay, fine. But consider this a favor. Hmm, with our Fontaine friend present, perhaps we should rename this event to the Three Nations Congenial Poetry Gala. Also, I'm just noticing that Paimon should only count as a half teammate at most. Hmm, that kind of puts Team Traveler at a bit of a disadvantage. Well, how about this? I'll join in as well. Director Hotel, here to help out in your hour of greatest need. What does everyone think? Naturally, the more the merrier. Being the host of the festival shouldn't stop you from having the chance to enjoy it like the rest of us. Then, it's settled. Everyone else in the audience, feel free to join in too and support your favorite team. What about me? Shall I keep track of the score? No need for that. The teams are just a formality. We're all friends here, and this isn't intended to be competitive. But what do you think, Judge Zhongli? I concur, Director. Moreover, it would be disingenuous to impose upon our friends from Mondstadt and Fontaine a competition in which they are judged on how rigorously they can adhere to Leo poetic conventions. Since this is a congenial poetry gala, should we not begin with inspiration and finish with friendly conversation? The aim being for all participants to enjoy themselves. Oh, <sighs> that's a relief. I was so nervous about this, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty relaxed. 
Couldn't have asked for a better judge. Zhang Li said everything I was supposed to say only far more eloquently. So, without further ado, I shall pass the baton to Venti. No problem. Friends old and new, put on your thinking caps and take a deep breath of fresh air. The second stage of our poetry gala will now commence. Matching couplets. Perhaps I could break the ice with a humble contribution to inspire others to share their brilliance. Please listen to the first line in the couplet. <clears throat> Lounging in luxury inside a Shinue kiosk booth, delighting in countless contemporary tastes. What? He managed to think of one already? Oh, he seems like a real expert at this. Hmm, Shinue kiosk. Should that be paired with Lily Pavilion? Or are they too similar for a couplet? Oh, this is pretty difficult. Shinue Kiosk. Contemporary tastes? Hmm. I guess I should pair the modernity of their VIP dining experience with an emblem of the past. Ah! Oh, maybe where I was training that one time. That was quite ancient. The weather was terrible that day. Okay. I got something. Surrounded by history, outside a Tianghong Pass pavilion, as lightning sets the boundless tenebrous skies ablaze. Wow! Chongyun completed the couplet! Hmm. Xinyue Kiosk is a renowned modern restaurant, while the mountain pass of Tianhong is a prominent historical landmark. These two iconic locations form a complementary pair. The imagery also contrasts rather well between the two halves of the couplet, one half describing a leisurely and comfortable indoor scene, the other portraying a hazardous outdoor scenario where there is no protection from the elements. Huh? I was just describing what I experienced that day. <laughs> I guess I just got lucky. All right then, I guess I'll start the next couplet. Mind pines for Mingyun, flesh confined to Qingse, spirit striding high on Zhuyun's clouds. Oh, Changyun, you dark horse. Looks like you came to play today. This conjures the image of one with lofty aspirations, whose life is limited to a small town, but who awaits the opportunity to one day ascend above the clouds. The use of various locations for their symbolism is quite novel indeed. Oh! Soul shines like jade stone, dressed in finest silkware, lucent heart still beats within me now. Wow, how did Noel do that? A superb line. It employs the metaphor of precious stone to describe one of noble and moral character, with a pure and clear heart. The symbolism in this case is centered around objects, truly the work of a skilled poet. That was a commendable couplet. All thanks to your guidance while we were out on our inspiration walk. I'd like to start the next couplet. Up into the misty karst, down among the grassy marsh, all for lotus seed and bird egg soup. Lotus seed and bird egg soup? What is it, Diona? Did you think of a second line for the couplet? No. Everyone's poems are so complicated. I need more time just to understand them. But when I heard lotus seed and bird egg soup, it made me think of berry and mint burst. Maybe because I mixed a similar drink recently. <laughs> North beyond the Starfell Lake, South across the windswept plains, just for berries squeezed and mint infused. No wonder everyone praises the traveler so highly. You answered so quickly. Both halves of this couplet require intimate knowledge of the terrain in question and the local plants that may be found there. The two of you are clearly both seasoned travelers. Does this mean I helped? Hey now, Zhongli. Don't just praise everything you hear. You should question and press them a bit. Don't worry about upsetting anyone. After all, I'm here to take the heat. 
and allow me to try another. Qingxin has no heart, still it soothes the human heart. Is she talking about the medicinal effects of Qingxin? Hmm. This is a hard one to match. Sweet dream is no dream, yet it nurtures people's dreams. Sweet dream... does that really match? Hmm... Since the suitability of the match has been queried, I shall act according to the director's wishes and ask you, what is the link between Sweet Dream and Qingxin? <laughs> uh... Oh, you mean eating a delicious dessert before bed will make you sleep well, right? <gasps> You're amazing! <laughs> then I agree. The two halves of the couplet match. This point is well deserved. Points for me. Points for thee. This judge gives out points for free. But if you ask me, everyone's being a little too conventional so far. Let's push the envelope a little. Go nuts! Oh? In that case, why don't you finish this one for me, Hu Tao? Round moon in the heavens, full moon at night. Celebrate with circle of friends. Hmm. Oh, square meals in the basement. Big bowls of rice decorate with cuboids of meat. Huh? What the? Ah, we have ourselves a pedant's couplet. The two halves have no thematic connection. Yet each word has its perfect parallel, meaning the two halves do form a cohesive whole. The strict pairings make this no easier to achieve than a thematically coherent couplet. Blah, 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 blah. So verbose. Zhongli, just tell me if I got a point or not. Of course you did. I presumed it went without saying. Ahem. Through Cheongji, I walked a hundred miles. At Gweili, I ended my march. In Dihua, the silver grass grows in two styles, but horsetails don't trot out the marsh. From vendors, I bought some 15 steaks. At dinner, I sizzled the lots. At pressure, the tenderloin cooks in two ticks, but 15 won't fit in the pot. Huh? So that's a pedant's couplet. Papa thinks she can do that too. I thought of one. Wolf hooks can't hook there and bunny. Aw, that's a cute couplet. Sweet flowers can't out sweet sister Barbara. Huh? <laughs> now, that's the passion we like to see. Although, unfortunately, your response was technically one word too long. Hmm. In that case, Whopper Flowers can't whop Jumpy Dumpty. Oh, this monster's got talents. Whew. I'm so relieved. I at least managed to get one. Hmm. Nestling by a roaring fire, scent of tea wafts from the stove, reading through the heart of clear springs. <sighs> Wow, Noelle came up with another one! Come on, match the couplet! Paimon knows you can do it! Uh, do you really think Paimon has what it takes? Fine, Paimon will give it a whirl! Nestling by a roaring fire, scent of tea wafts from the stove, reading through the heart of clear springs. Hmm... Uh... Seething in the pouring rain, sword of pain swipes at my foe, beating up the eye of the storm. What? Really? 
Yes, very good. The image of challenging powerful foes in the harshest of conditions seemed to manifest before my eyes, and it was perfectly juxtaposed against the atmosphere of leisurely reading with a cup of freshly brewed tea. Really? <laughs> Maybe Paimon has a knack for this after all. <laughs> it appears that my services as a judge are no longer needed. Roy, are you okay? You look like you're getting tired. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Although, I do have a question I'd like to ask. Have all of you read Heart of Clear Springs? I haven't actually read it. My dad told me the story once. It's about a spring fairy and a young boy. Oh, yes. The story of a spring fairy who left her homeland and met a boy under the moonlight in a faraway land. The boy poured out his heart to her, and she listened to his stories. Over time, the boy grew up and began to develop feelings for the spring fairy. But the spring fairy didn't understand human love and was afraid that making a promise to him would ultimately end in tragedy, and so... Um... Ooh, I don't know if Diona's father mentioned the part about the kiss to her. In the end, the spring fairy left the boy and was never heard from again. Oh yes, that's it! Many years went by and the boy became an old man, but he never stopped believing that the fairy was real and not just a dream. Sounds like a tragic tale. So, what do you guys think of the spring fairy in the story? I'm sure she made her decision with the best of intentions, but the boy couldn't hope to understand why she left. It's a shame that the misunderstanding never got cleared up. Well, do you think she should go back and see that boy again, if she ever had another chance? Now? But... Isn't he an old man by the end of the story? Hmm... Isn't it a bit late? What if it just led to more regrets? Oh, sorry. No, oh, Maybe I'm being too pessimistic. If Paimon was that boy... Hmm... Actually, Paimon would definitely want to see the Spring Fairy again, no matter how old Paimon got. After all, she's the love of his life, right? I see. Oh? <laughs> Looks like the party's still going strong over here. Are you coming up with more couplets? Need my help? Stick to hosting, Tone Deaf Bard. If you get involved, you'll only match every couplet yourself and not leave any for the rest of us. <laughs> I never knew you had such a high opinion of my abilities, Paimon. But the couplet games are all over now. Tomorrow's theme is freestyle poetry. Do we have to share our own poems with everyone? That's right! If you're not feeling confident, don't worry. It's never too late to register for Venti's Poetry Cram class. I'll sign up. Oh, me too. Hold on there, Buster. Before you start peddling your classes, just how much freedom is there with this freestyle poetry exactly? Aren't there any requirements at all? It's as free as the winds that blow. And there's nothing freer. There are no limits to genre, form, content, or anything else. So long as it comes from the heart, you're welcome to put it into poetry. Give it a try. There's no better chance to express your innermost thoughts. Whoa. 
That's almost too much freedom. Paimon can't decide which way to go. Our travels? Or maybe all the food that the travelers cooked for Paimon. Will you come too, Kelly Roy? Paimon wants to see what you write. Oh, um, yes. I'll be there. Ugh. Ugh, my nose is starting to itch again. All right, I shall leave you to privately ponder your poems and bid you all good night. See you tomorrow. Ah! That was a refreshing sleep. Let's go to the venue. Paimon's really looking forward to hearing everyone's poems. Huh? Looks like we're a few people short today. Morning, friends. Singcho said he wants to take some time and focus on writing poems, so he'll join us later. Noelle has other duties today, so she asked me to tell everyone not to wait up for her. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. What about Kelly Roy, though? She said she'd be here. I got here really early, but I haven't seen her yet. Are you talking about the girl with the blue hair? I saw her on the bridge near Dihua Marsh during my morning training. She looked a little upset, so I didn't want to disturb her. Upset? Oh no, what should we do? Was it something we said last night? Oh, Paimon's worried. I agree. If she's run into some kind of trouble, I'd like to help her. Huh? You're all going? Then I'm coming too! Shall we start with the bridge? We're all here a little early, so there should be time. Good idea! We'll be back in a jiffy! Oh, so this is the place? We ran into her here yesterday too. She looked like something was weighing on her mind then as well. It's also not far from where we were dropping those leaves. Huh. Leaves? Oh, right. We were so busy matching couplets we forgot to mention. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder... Could Miss Callie Roy have been the one who wrote that poem on the leaf? Hmm? What makes you say that? Oh, sorry. Uh, nothing. Well, uh, nothing concrete. Uh, just a hunch, I guess. It's just... That poem on the leaf kind of gave me the same feeling as when I saw her yesterday. So much sadness. Now that you mention it, this is upstream from where we found the poem. Huh? Hey, look! Over there! Another leaf! Wow, you're right! And this one has writing on it, too! After that leaf! Oh, why does it have to float so quickly? Can't you just fly over and grab it? Um, but Paimon can't swim. What if Paimon accidentally falls into the water? It stopped! No! Whew! We finally caught it. Are the words still legible? Or have they been washed out? Looks like the ink's intact. Let Paimon take a look at what it says. Huh? This is related to the poem we wrote in reply yesterday. She must have picked up one of our leaves. Spring. Young boy. Hmm. It's looking a lot like Kelly Roy was the one who wrote this. She seems to care a lot about that story, huh? Actually, when Paimon first saw her, Paimon was wondering, do you think... is it possible that... she's... a... Uh... Based on the current and accounting for wind strength... Everyone, please follow me. This should be far enough upstream. Let's split up and search the area. Kelly Roy! Kelly Roy! Ah! She's surrounded by hilly jewels! Let's go save her! Kelly Roy, are you okay? Oh, what's that? It's a huge water droplet! 
this is exactly what I saw the other day. Huh? Why are you all looking at me like that? Oh no! My body! Is it? That voice is definitely Kelly Roy's. Uh, how did this happen? Uh, please wait a moment! Oh no! Did I use up too much energy? How did you... What's going on here? Miss Kelly Roe, are you some kind of adeptus? No. I'm so sorry for deceiving you all for so long. Actually, I'm an Oceanid who flowed here from Fontaine long ago. What's an Oceanid? Ah, the Grandmaster has mentioned them before. The Oceanids were the familiars of the former Hydro Archon. Uh, they all fled Fontaine after the Archon died and uh, settled across the world. That's correct. Though, to tell you the truth, I can't even completely recall how I found myself here. I have a vague impression of my ancestral home, but I can't recall clearly anything I saw on my journey. All I know is that by the time I arrived in Mondstadt, I had lost most of my power and couldn't even sustain a physical form. Eventually, I settled in a place called Springvale, where I slowly began to regain my power. Springvale is a serene and beautiful place. The water that flows through there is clear and pure, just like the hearts of the people who dwell there. So you're the Spring Fairy of Springvale? Yes, Diona, and I remember you too, you know. When you were little, you often came to the spring at night to speak with me. Really? You're not messing with me, are you? I... Oh, I always thought that was just a local legend. Your favorite little pillow, the fish one? Its name is Bubbles, is it not? Ah, uh, yep! All those childhood memories. So they weren't just a dream. So, if this is true, then all those things written on the leaves... I see. So you were the ones who found my leaf. Well, you are correct. The Spring Fairy and Heart of Clear Springs is me. No wonder you were asking us so many questions about it. So... The boy from the story... ...is Finch. I always loved listening to people's dreams. And still do, to this day. Whether they're beautiful, sad, or... ...filled with emotions I couldn't understand at the time. One night, a little boy came to the spring. The tears that fell from his face were more fragile than a moonbeam... ...and purer than the morning dew. I like humans and wanted to understand them better. I also wanted to make sense of the feelings contained in his tears that were, then, a mystery to me. Yes, we often met under the stars, sharing our stories with one another. Sometimes, we'd stay up all night and see who would hear the first bird chirping from the boughs, or the first cicada of summer. But, one day, just like the book says, I saw an emotion in Finch's eyes that I couldn't reciprocate. I felt out of my depth, in uncharted waters. But I knew all too well that we lock folk face a very different fate from that of humans. Whatever was happening, I didn't want it to lead to Finch writing a chapter of his life that he would later come to regret. So, I fled, and never appeared before him again. Oh, Kelly Roy. My strength returns very slowly, and even after decades, I can only sustain a physical form for a very short time. I once hoped that Finch would be able to move on, and meet me when the stars in the night sky have all gone out. But after seeing so many people's stories, and hearing about all their dreams, I have gradually come to understand Finch's heart. 
This feeling of wanting to respond to his feelings is surging relentlessly in my chest, and I can no longer restrain it. But I'm also scared. Scared that if I go and see him now, I'll bring nothing but disappointment, and even more pain when it comes time to part. Oh. It really is a difficult choice. Mm. Please go see him! Huh? Now, I know Grandpa Finch, and he's a really kind person. When I was struggling to learn how to draw maps, he was always encouraging me, telling me not to give up, always keep trying, and get out there and have some adventures. He often tells me stories about his past, but I've never once seen a look of regret or sadness in his face. And even though Grandpa Finch loves adventures, he still stands there by the spring every day, as if he's waiting for something. I believe that he's serious about his feelings for you, Miss Callie Roy. He's never stopped hoping that he'll see you again one day. So if you want to see him too, then what are you waiting for? <gasps> huh? Ah, uh, I, I, oh, sorry. I think I got a bit too excited and, uh, and I just thought, uh, well, it just sort of came out. Mm, I understand. That settles it. I've decided. I will go back and see Finch. You will? You're amazing! That's great! But I'd like to ask all of you for some help. Sure. Just say the word. We'll help you any way we can. Would you come to Springvale with me and help to bring Finch to my side? I cannot maintain this form for much longer, and I'm worried others will see me how I was just before. Leave it to me! I'm really close with Grandpa Finch! Also, please keep Finch's in my secret. I wouldn't want Springvale's tranquil waters to become agitated on account of all this. Your secret is safe with me. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> That's a promise. Great. I can't thank you all enough. Uh... What's wrong? Are you gonna turn back into a water droplet? No, I'm sorry, it's just that my mind's racing. As much as I want to talk to him again, I'm still worried that I won't have the words when the time comes. A poem? Hmm. Okay, good idea. I'll write him a poem. And it will be called Heart of Clear Springs. Are you okay? It's nothing. I'm just scared that I won't be able to maintain this form much longer. Okay, don't panic. Wait here, Kelly Roy. I'll go fetch Grandpa Finch. Take it slow, Diona. Finch isn't a young man anymore. He's not as steady on his feet. I can still hold on a bit longer. Okay, stay strong. You can do it! Now, how are you holding up? Would you like some support, Miss Kelly Roy? You can also lean on Paimon if you need. Thank you, all of you. Grab a Finch! Uh, is that Diona? You're back early today. Today's your special day, Grandpa Finch! Can you come with me? Oh? Well, where are we going? Over there! To the waterfall! <laughs> Did you catch a nice little fishy? Uh, just come with me already! This is extremely important! But I promised your father that I'd go to... Grandpa Finch! 
All right, all right. No need to get worked up. I'm right behind you. That's more like it. Now come on, I'll help you. <laughs> oh, Draft's daughter is just like him when she's on a mission. What are all these people doing here? Even Mika's here? <laughs> How's work been going lately? And even some friends from abroad, if I'm not mistaken. You do know that today's not my birthday, don't you? Greetings, Mr. Finch. My name is Chong Yoon. We all met at the Poetry Gala, and... Well, there's someone we'd like to introduce you to. Finch. <gasps> that voice. Kelly Roe. I didn't think you'd still remember. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember all right. How could I ever forget? Although your appearance is different than I recall. Back then, you looked like you'd stepped right out of a fairy tale. Oh, but I'm one to talk. Of course a fairy from a fairy tale can change forms. But in your eyes, I'm probably the one who's changed beyond all recognition. <laughs> oh, even after all these years, you still know just what to say to make me laugh. I thought you were only able to appear in the dead of night. There have been times when I've wondered whether it really was all a dream. I'm sorry I kept you waiting for so long, Finch. Oh, it can't have been that long. It's been but the blink of an eye, really. Finch, would you like to hear a poem I wrote for you? A poem? You write poetry now? Well, of course. I'd be delighted to listen. I'll hang on every word that leaves your lips. In that case, let me read you a story about the Spring Fairy. Far from my native land I roamed. In streams I slept, many seasons I met as the sun set and rose. I searched for a garden to call a home, and the moonlight ebbed as the water flowed. A soft breeze beckoned me unto a spring. Sleep, weary wanderer, your journey is over. May the dancing petals sweeten your slumber. At dawn, I hummed the melody of a distant stream, and the songs in the night serenaded my dreams. A boy's tender tears trembled through the water, stirring me more than any starlight sonata. He wove me a wreath from past petals and future buds, I crossed beyond the veil of dreams to the realm of flesh and blood. Look at the love that shines from his eager gaze. Answer the call of his heart, lest this moment go to waste. The kittens and fireflies invited my heartstrings to sing, but I was a stranger to the melody of mankind and knew not how this tune should begin. As the river of dreams trickled into the ocean blue, Every time a crystal fly flapped its wings, older it seemed he grew. But I learned to fathom human ways each stumbling step I took, 
and clouds of confusion became crystal clear in the vulnerable verse I wrote. As seed yearns for soil and trees for the sun, a once foreign melody inside my heart sung, and it cried out your name on every string it could strum. Now I give my dream to you. May it be in your slumber a sweet spring to quench your thirst. Now I hand my heart to you, praying my belated promise might meet still with your trust. Yes. <laughs> this is how I remember you from when we first met. All those years ago. <laughs> it really has been a long, old time, hasn't it? Finch, I... It's okay. I understand. Your poem, it... It explains everything. Thank you, Finch. <laughs> Please, take this. <gasps> it's so beautiful. This is a droplet of water condensed from my own power. Finch, I don't have a physical form like humans. And I can't stay by your side. I don't know how long it'll be before I can change back into human form again. But as long as this droplet remains with you, our hearts will always be connected, no matter the distance between us. I will always be one with the spring. From this day onwards, if you call me, I will meet you in your dreams. Oh, it's so romantic! <laughs> You've really learned a lot, haven't you? And you don't even mind that the kids are watching. Does it bother you? How could it possibly? This is the happiest moment of my life. I just worry that once I go to sleep, I won't ever want to wake up again. Huh? Don't say that. <laughs> I'm only joking. It seems that you still have much to learn. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Grandpa Finch and Kelly Roy look so happy. Oh, what a perfect moment. Diona, thank you for fetching Finch for me. I've never forgotten you either. I used to chat with you a lot. Wasn't it ever annoying? <laughs> of course not. You are one of the truest friends I have in the entire world. That's why I gave you your gift, so that a part of me could always be with you. Huh? Wait... So is Diona's ability to mix delicious drinks from disgusting ingredients a blessing from this water spirit? And if so... Is it also possible that my pure Yang spirit is a gift from some being? Yes? I've never regretted meeting you, or deciding to talk to you that night. Not once, all these long years. Not for a single moment. <laughs> it probably goes without saying, but neither have I. in the stories. That fateful night. I never gave you that kiss. This gift that represents my 
promise and my love. I give it to you now. Huh? It's okay, everyone. She's gone now. Don't worry now. She hasn't gone far. Just like she said, she'll always be one with the spring. By our side and in our dreams. Oh, child. Let me stay here a little longer. Oh? Hey, you're all back! And it looks like you're in much better spirits than before. Hu Tao's a step ahead. She's already talking about printing a poetry anthology. She said she... can't wait for everyone's final words because I'm itching to pull the trigger. By which I assume she meant she eagerly anticipates receiving everyone's freestyle poetry submissions to help her close the deal. <laughs> Where have you all been? I've been waiting here forever. Perhaps they lacked sufficient inspiration and wished to have an emergency communion with nature. And with any luck, I'll bet they heard some fine poetry along the way. How death barred! Does this mean that right from the start you... Oh, uh, right from the start, you said you would treat us to a nice meal! Huh? Uh, did I? <laughs> Very well. Since the Traveler agrees, then it looks like I can't escape this time. Diona! Dear Diona, could I trouble you to fix us a couple of your delicious beverages? Huh, you wish. All right. Well, normally I'd never agree, but since I happen to be in a good mood today... Huh? So, just what have you guys been up to all this time? Why does it feel like there are some unspoken words hanging in the air here that everyone is privy to but myself? Really? Must be the breeze. You're reading way too much into it. Y yeah yeah that's right. We're just, uh, taking a walk. Inspiration walk, since it worked so well last time. <laughs> hmm, so even Mika's in on it? chong -Yoon, how about you tell me what happened on the sly? I've just remembered that I heard about a haunted house recently that you'll definitely want to check out. I'm willing to bet that even your pure Yang spirit won't be able to scare off these demons. I appreciate the gesture, but... No thanks. Not this time. And I'm starting to think that maybe this pure Yang spirit isn't such a bad thing after all. Huh? What the? What's gotten into you? Okay, that confirms it. I call shenanigans. Something big definitely went down here. Yeah. 